we're doing uh, reasoning and proof. Um, a lot of things in this class will be um, less about finding the right answer and more about proving how that is the right answer. So, um, for example, we'll actually do problems where I give you the right answer, I give you the end result, um, and you have to tell me all the steps involved in order to prove that that is the right result. Um, and this is super important. Think about like a this is one of those skills that you'll, you'll use in the future. Think about lawyers, right? Um, a lawyer needs to provide like a chain of evidence to say, oh, hey, the reason we know this guy, um, you know, robbed the liquor store is because we found, you know, glass in his, you know, jean cuffs and there was a broken window at the liquor store and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, footprints and DNA or what, everything else, right? You need to like have that chain of evidence um, in order to prove that something is, is true. So... We're going to do the same thing in math here, um, and we're going to talk about some of these. Uh, I, it's a little weird. They gave us a problem, and some of you guys have this question already, which is great, um, what a conjecture is, but it's simply a statement that you're believed to be true. Um, you don't have any, um, that you, you know, you may have some evidence, or it may be just based on observation, something like that. Um, a couple more definitions here. The first is inductive reasoning. Um, inductive reasoning is where you um, make uh, general um, statements from very specific instances. Um, oftentimes this is like a pattern recognition, right? So, oh hey, I have a function, I'm going from, you know, 2, then 4, then 6, then 8, then 10. Um, you know, what is the pattern is the inductive reasoning, right? You'd say, oh, well you're just adding 2 each time, or you're doing even numbers each time. Um, that, that's that's an example about inductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is a little bit more about like um, like logical steps. So I would say something like, um, oh, all all mammals um, uh, give birth to live young, right? And then you'd say, oh, a horse gives birth to live young. Um, therefore. Um, you know, a, a horse is a mammal, or, or something, something like that. Um, not the best example, but uh, so so we'll we'll do some more examples here. Um, so for this one, it says complete the steps to make a conjecture about the sum of three consecutive counting numbers. Um, we'll start with the first three numbers: one, two, three. Um, is the sum divisible by three? Well, what do you think? It's six, so therefore, yes, it is. Um, Write the sum of the next three counting numbers, starting with two. So one, two, three, and then we have four, five, six. Um, all right, no, <laughs> four, five, six. Uh, two, three, four. So we add those together. What is two plus three plus four? Um, well, that one nine. Is that divisible by three? Yes. So our conjecture, just based on two examples now, is that any three consecutive numbers added together um, give us a value that's divisible by three. Right? Um, we come up with this conjecture just based off, you know, our, our few examples. Um, that's, that's inductive reasoning. But inductive reasoning isn't very solid. We want to get a nice deductive reasoning um, to do that. So we're going to use uh, uh, deductive reasoning here. Um, I'd like to point out another definition. It says um, that a theorem is a statement you can prove to be true. So um, a lot of people think, oh, it's just a theory, or oh, this is just a theorem. Um, no, theorems are something that we have actually um, been able to um, to d definitively prove one way or another. So think Pythagorean theorem, right? There's many proofs for Pythagorean theorem. Um, the angle addition postulate, however, is merely um, you know kind of that common sense. It's so basic, we just don't have any real way to prove it. Um, it's like proving that one plus one equals two. Like, well, it just does. Um, so, we'll we'll so most will mostly we'll deal with theorems. Um, there'll be many theorems you'll have to learn. Some theorems you'll have to prove yourself. Um, sometimes we'll deal with postulates, but we'll just treat them kind of the same. Um, so they're going to say, oh, let's 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 use some deductive reasoning here. Uh, let the three consecutive counting numbers be represented by um, n, n plus 1, and n plus 2. Um, the sum of three consecutive counting numbers can be written as, uh, okay, so we're going to rewrite this. Um, if we add all these together, we have three n's and three, right? You combine like terms. 
Um, can we factor this? Yes, we can factor it. It's 3 times n plus 1. Um, sorry, bear with me. Oh, what is this? There we go. Nope. Nope. There we go. Uh, the expression 3 times n plus 1 is divisible by 3 for all values of n. Therefore, um, the sum of three consecutive counting numbers is divisible by three. All right, we've proved this now um, using a series of logical steps. Uh, a couple more examples of definitions here. Uh, this one comes up occasionally. Counterexamples are something that proves to be false, right? So um, going back to my mammal example, you say, okay, all mammals give birth to live young. Well, can you provide a counterexample for that? Um, somebody pulls out a platypus and shows me a platypus it's like oh this is a you know a counterexample it means that your previous rule is is false right um, something like that uh, suppose you use deductive reasoning to show that an angle is not acute can you conclude that the angle is obtuse um, is so if it's not acute acute does that mean it's obtuse um, no there are other options right um, it could be a right angle okay uh, we are going to do lots of proofs, um, where proof, again, follows that, that logical step, just like we did with um, this one here, um, showing that, sorry, this is the second part, um, this one here showing one step at a time that each, um, you know, there's, there's a logical flow here, um, and that you can prove each individual step until you get to your final conclusion. So um, the final conclusion could be all sorts of things. The simplest one will just be like an, an algebra expression, right? Um, if I, uh, you were given this algebra expression, so if 3x minus 5 equals 13, then um, x equals 6, right? Yes, it's true that x equals 6, but we want to go a little bit further, and instead of just assuming that x equals 6, right? Think back to your, you know, algebra days, pre-algebra days. Um, how do we how do we get there? <clears throat> That x equals 6. Well, um, we need to do things to like both sides of the equation, stuff like that. Um, and so we need reasons for everything we do. <coughs> um, there's a nice list of reasons for some of your algebra things you do. Um, and we won't go through all of them, but just know that these exist. Um, the first one is the addition property of equality. And it basically says, hey, if we have an equal sign, we can add something to both sides. Uh, the second one says, oh, subtraction property of equality. Hey, if you have an equal sign, you can subtract things from both sides, and then multiply things, and then divide things from both sides. Um, let me skip that one. Uh, the symmetric property means that it doesn't matter what side of the equal sign we're using. The transitive property, this one's kind of cool. Um, it basically says that if um, this thing is equal to the other thing, and the other thing is equal to that thing, then this thing is equal to that thing. Um, not having a great example of this though, but um, this will this will come up quite a bit as it turns out, um, where we can use this this transitive property. It means that um, the equality is is transitive. So um, basically, all three of these things are equal to each other once we've established that a is equal to b and b is equal to c. And then finally, we can substitute in. Um, you guys should be familiar with that. Okay, so here's an example of a proof. Oftentimes for these proofs, we'll put our, our statements on the left, um, and then we'll put our reasoning over on the, the, the right-hand side. So our sta first statement is basically a, a given statement, right? We didn't come up with this, that 14 equals 3x minus 4. So we didn't provide that. It's just automatically there. So we don't need a, another separate statement, a reason for that. Um, What's the reasoning to go from 14 equals 3x minus 4 to 18 equals 3x? Well, they added 4 to both sides, right? So they used the addition property of equality. And then finally, they divided both sides by 3. That's the division property of equality. And then they switched it around so x equals something. Um, that's a symmetric property. Uh, we'll do another one here real quick. Um, see if you can fill out these boxes here real quick. Well, um, yeah, I erase them. Pause. So I'll just empty these in the essence of time. Um, hopefully you got those right. Okay, um, 
I'm going to do another pause here, uh, see if you can come up with eh, something. All zebras belong to the genus Equus. Um, so we need to write this as a conditional statement. Conditional statements have the if-then format. So if what, then what. Um, this one's a little vague. It uh, basically says if an animal uh, is a zebra, then it's in the genus Equus. Right? Um, the bill will pass if it gets two-thirds of the vote in the Senate. So therefore, if a bill will get two votes, thirds of the vote in the Senate, then it will pass. Um, and then this one, use deductive reasoning to solve. Um, again, we're just, we just want to show our steps here. So we show our steps. And then finally, uh, this one, it shows the steps. Um, we just need to, or they're not related steps, but it shows each um, property. We just need to name it. So this first one, um, we multiply both sides by two. So that's multiplication. Uh, this one, um, we switched it around, so therefore um, it's the uh, symmetric move. Um, this one, uh, they multiplied um, both sides by 5 and then added 7. Oh, no, no, that makes more sense. Okay, so if, if t equals 5. 4, then 5t plus 7 equals 27. Yeah, so this say substitute 4 in there, um, right there. And then finally, um, if 9 equals 4x and 4x equals m, then 9 equals m. That's transitive. Um, these two can sometimes be mixed in a little bit. Like this, you could define this as substitution in a way. Um, I'd, I'd accept that on tests. Um, linear pair theorem. Um, it brings us to the definition of supplementary. Uh, if two angles are supplementary, then they add up to 180 degrees. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, every single time you hear the word supplementary, supplementary, 180 degrees. So this is a linear pair. They are supplementary. Supplementary equals 180 degrees. Okay. Um, a linear pair in specifics, linear pair is a, a a pair of angles that together, when you just put them next to each other, it forms a nice a straight line. So that makes this a linear pair. Um, straight lines, therefore, are 180 degrees, um, and 180 degrees is supplementary. Have I said that enough? I'll say it one more time. Supplementary means 180 degrees. Yeah, okay, uh, I'm just gonna skip that. Um, so this one here, we're gonna use the uh, what postulate here we know that the um, angle RST is 15x minus 10. Um, so RST is 15x minus 10, and then we know these two angles inside. We're going to use the angle addition postulate, which we've had before. Um, we can set up our equation. We can combine like terms. Um, we can solve for x, right? So therefore, we know that x equals, equals 5. Um, a few more postulates out there. Um, we'll make, I'll make a list, like on a test or something, I'll give you a list of every one you need to know um, for any list. But um, these are just some, some properties of our geometry that we're going to work with. Uh, the first is that through any two points, there is exactly, so one, no more than one, no less than one, line. So we have two points, we have one line that goes through. Um, if we have three non-collinear points, so they're, they're not in the straight line, there's exactly one plane that contains those. So that's the reason why we can name a plane using three points, um, is because there's no other planes that have these three points in them. If two points lie in a plane, the line containing those plane points lies on the plane. That's pretty obvious. Um, if two lines intersect, they intersect at one point. Remember, because all our lines are straight. There's no such thing as a curvy line. Um, and then finally, if two planes intersect, so this one's a little confusing, um, but we have uh, two infinite planes intersecting, right? They can only intersect at a, a line. Doesn't matter if they're you know, close to each other, or perpendicular. Okay, so this one, we're looking at the figure. We just need to um, pull out an example, sorry. Pull out an example from the figure. So what is an example of uh, the line of intersection of two planes? Oh, I'll let you guys do this one. Um, 
Komm da. Was? Here are some examples. There are other examples um, for a lot of these. So uh, two planes can intersect at um, JF. Um, you could also have um, GF or um, FG or something like that. Um, yeah, any of those would work. Point of intersection of two lines. Um, the two lines here all meet at point J. Um, uh, three coplanar points. Um, basically, the only, well, J is right here in the middle. So you could say um, uh, HFG or any three points. They're, they're all coplanar. All the listed ones are in this center plane. Uh, three collinear points. Um, the only three that are collinear are F, J, and G. Okay, that's it. Um, see you later.